triple 16 and 14 inch guns of these Japanese dreadnoughts were leveled against the light batteries of our escort vessels. Never outfought, but outgunned, outnumbered, outmatched, our jeep carriers radioed for help to Admiral Halsey's third fleet in the north. Admiral Halsey had to make a difficult decision. Should he go to the rescue and ignore the surprise from the north? Should he hold his position and leave our small force off Samar to fight overwhelming odds? The Admiral did neither. Instead, he kept the main units of his powerful command on its course, but dispatched a carrier group to the Samar battle area. Facing the murderous barrage of the Jap heavyweights at point-blank range, these little ships, fighting a desperate battle for time, used everything in the book to stay afloat and never stopped firing until the sea closed over four of them. A grateful people will remember their names. The Gambia Bay, the USS Cole, the Johnston, the Samuel B. Roberts. Theirs is a new and valiant chapter in our naval history. On the dawn of the third day, while the battle was still raging in the south, the curtain was rising in the north on another phase of this great naval engagement. Sweeping down from Japanese home waters came this third great enemy force, supported by waves of land-based bombers, dedicated to the imperial mission of striking the finishing blow for Hirohito. The Japs were flinging on the board of war their highest stakes, their future as a naval power. Once again, our fighting men rose up to meet the enemy. Even the men of the sunken Princeton fought on from other decks. Our pilots swarmed from more carriers than the Japs had ever seen before. To knock the enemy out of the sky, blast them from the sea. Below them was the Japanese fleet. This was it. same time. Some of ours had trouble up there too. Everyone they crippled, more were taking off.
zigzag crazily. But there was no place in the Philippine Sea this day where they could hide from the most devastating attack ever launched in the Pacific. enemy ship that still had a runner was doing its best to turn and run for home. For even while thousands of Japs were being fished out of the very waters they had considered their own private sea, our fleet was hunting down the remnants of three Imperial forces. And as night fell on the last day of battle, this was all that would ever be seen of 24 Japanese warships and 400 enemy planes. 35 more warships were sinking or straggling home. For every victory, men must die. It was battle-smashed planes like these that told the story of that victory eloquently. For here in this plane, damaged beyond repair, an American airman died at his battle station. His shipmates felt it fitting that he be buried this way. For now, let him be nameless. Let him be all the sons of America who have died for our cause. Let his death make that cause all the more precious to us, the living. with the enemy wounded but desperately rebuilding his fleet for a savage defense of his island fortress. Our course is set for 1945, pointing past Leyte and Mindoro, beyond the Philippines, to Japan itself. A dangerous foe that again and again must be brought to action. Mm -hmm. 